Hello, hello, friends. Amy R. here with Perry Paper and Ink. Welcome to my face. For those not familiar or have watched my more recent videos, changing up how I film things, actually showing up in my videos so it's not just my hands, and yeah, getting close. Getting close to being able to do live streams. Something I want to do. I think it'll be fun. I've done a few in the past, a couple on my channel. Um, I've done some on Honeybee's channel. And I will let everyone know, most likely on my social media. So especially um, my Facebook page, which will be linked below my Instagram, all of that. It's all linked in the description box below my videos. Um, when, when I set an official date. <laughs> Hopefully soon. Hopefully, like really soon. Hopefully, um, I'll give everyone a heads up, give them a day or two notice, something um, that I have a live stream. That's my biggest hurdle is just finding a time, like scheduling ahead of time. Anyway, today's card. No idea at the moment exactly what I'm gonna make, but I, of course, could not resist. This is the lovely layers water lily wafer die set from Honeybee. Um, love it. And they always look very, um, overwhelming when you see, like, all these wafer dies. They are the easiest thing to put together. I do have a playlist that I will link at the end of this video. And it'll have all the videos I've done using various lovely layers sets from Honeybee because there's been a bunch. And I love them. They're so fun and they literally, especially the florals, are the easiest thing in the world to put together. You just go largest to smallest, honestly. It's so simple, but I have ideas. I have ideas. We'll see where it goes and we'll see what the finished cards end up looking like. Cards? Card? We'll see if I do more than one. I have no idea. I just, I have to use this because it's so pretty and they're so fun. So just keep watching and we'll see what I make. Okay, so I made two cards. <laughs> And I've started off first with the background and I am using the new um, Honeybee Patina, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Patina stencil. I was looking at it and it was like, that. Lo it looks kind of like water to me. And so that's what I went for. So I'm using some like aqua teal, you know, peacock, I think might be the color, uh, cardstock from my stash. And then for the uh, embossing paste, I'm using, this is the uh, Picket Fence Paper Glaze Luxe in Indigo Bunting, which I used in a the Peacock video I did last month. Yeah, this stuff's pretty. It's got sparkle in it, which I'll show at the end. So I just applied it over the stencil with a palette knife. And like any, any paste, but especially glitter paste, immediately clean your stencil, your tools, etc. If you don't have access like to a sink and you're and you're, you know, doing a big old craft session, have a container of like warm soapy water or something that you can like toss your stencil and palette knife into because this kind of stuff is a nightmare to remove and sometimes impossible after it's dry. So, as soon as I was done stenciling both those backgrounds, I immediately washed them. Good to go. And then I set those backgrounds aside to dry. And then for the water lily, I used um, some just lightweight white cardstock from my stash. Um, I've had people ask about this with, especially with these types of lovely layers sets from Honeybee with the florals that have like multiple, multiple layers. I have no problem using like my good heavyweight cardstocks. Like some of them, the dimension ends up being quite insane and it's bulky, but I don't care. I love it. They're so gorgeous. But this time I went with just thinner cardstock just because. Why not? So I die cut all of the pieces that I needed for the actual blooms. And with this die set and pretty much all of Honeybee sets, you have to, you just die cut everything once and you have everything. You don't need to worry about um, like, oh, this needs to be die cut three times for this. You know, like everything is just done. Sorry. And when I say you go largest to smallest, that's literally what you do. So I die cut it everything twice because I was making two cards. 
And I also, what I really like to do is kind of assemble everything just as is after I've die cut it, just to give me that visual. Um, like there's, you can look at the, the visual on the like website, all that sort of stuff. But I like to actually stack all the die cut pieces together and it's like, okay, this is, you know, the top piece. This is what goes in the back, yada, yada. And it just helps, especially when I'm doing something like this, where I'm adding a bit of inking. You can tell too, when you're looking at the die cuts, because the die cuts also, you know, impress little details, little lines and dots and things like that. And with specifically these types, like these lovely layers types, you can always tell which parts are going to show up because they have those details. Anything that's like solid is going to be layered underneath. So I mentioned that because when I'm adding ink and things like that, I don't worry about like if there's splotchy areas here and there because those are the parts that are getting covered up. So I did very light ink blending. I've mentioned this in a lot of videos. I have a very heavy hand. Like, you know, you guys know I, I'm, I'm going to go big or go home, add fuchsia, three different layers of colors and, you know, sparkle and splatter and all the things because that's just what I do. And doing a light hand is very difficult for me, but I, I, I worked at it for this. I, I wanted it just that little hint of pink, you know. So I pulled out my lightest pink ink, which is Concord 9th Ballet Slippers. It's the lightest one I've got and a blending brush. And I just very lightly, and I could have gone even lighter, but for me, this was an accomplishment. So I'm happy with it, but very lightly added the ink to the layers with the blending brush. And then I've just show just to show here on camera, like layering it all together with the, with both of them, the actual bloom and then the bud largest to smallest and everything just fits it just makes sense and this applies to all of the lovely layers you there's all the little emboss lines are on there not just for detail but also to make it make sense where things line up and it just works because again if I can do it without having to you know someone walk me through the process if I can do it anybody can do it <laughs> So I've layered all the pieces and then the centers, those I die cut from scraps of a couple different shades of yellow cardstock. I could have just done them from white and, you know, ink blended color or used a marker that works too. But I have, you know, plenty of scraps to die cut for things like this. So I adhered all of that together and like, look at the difference between that one and the one at the top that I haven't added the ink to, like how that just gives it so much more depth. If you wanted to keep it looking more white, without like the, the little pink tone, you could use a very, very pale gray would work really nice. Just like a very, very light gray. And again, just use a very light hand and add a bit. I was going to do that, but the pink one out. <laughs> so it just, it does, it just gives it that more depth, you know? And then if you really want to add like depth and dimension, you could pop some of the pieces up with like foam foam squares you know little thin foam squares that sort of a thing too and it really livens everything up I in fact I don't know if I've ever even done that on any of the lovely layers um videos I've done because again I just it's all there the details just there so anyway did that with the blooms the greenery I die cut also just from green cardstock and I'm going to add a bit of dimension to that as well and I'm using Concord 9th's artichoke ink and this time using one of um waffle flowers shader brushes I've used these in a ton of videos and this artichoke ink is is juicy <laughs> I just recently like last month when they came out when Concord 9th released like all those new colors I finally caved and got the full-size ink pads because I love their inks and they kind of um fill out my my color selection like between simon says stamps positively saturated inks like they're all those colors and then the concord ones there's a lot more i would call it like more muted in a sense because they're not light like some of these colors are intense but they're just they're different colors so i don't find that there's really any overlaps which i'm just loving so it's like mark you guys know i've said this before do you need all the inks no do i no but i want them <laughs> i like having all the colors of all the things anywho anywho back to the project here so i used the ink and this little blender brush to add again more just more depth to these die cut pieces and then there's 
Um, there's a little way for die in the set that die cuts these three little just little strips basically like little slivers of cardstock and I die cut those from just a scrap of a lighter green and I did add a tiny tiny bit of that artichoke ink to it just to like tone it down a bit and these get adhered to this little die cut here and they're kind of like the curled up edges of the leaves you could totally skip this if you don't like fiddling with the little you know tiny die cuts but again this is where reverse tweezers here, you know, my endorsement for reverse tweezers, game changer, multiple pairs, always need multiple pairs of these. <laughs> because if you only have one, which is what I did for, you know, years and years and years, they always, they always walk off. They do. Anyway, I adhered those little, little curled up edges. And then I adhered the bud to that piece. I didn't adhere anything to the stem yet because I wanted to do that at the end so that I could like lay things out on the card front the way I want them to be. So I adhered everything together. And there we go. We've got this cute water lily with its little, um, you know, lily pad and the stem and the bud. And it's just, it's so pretty. And then I pulled out because I have a stack of all the honeybee lovely layers die sets. I'm trying to keep them all together because these are ones I reach for consistently. And this is the lovely layers bugs die set, which I oh, love, especially this one. This is the uh, dragonfly from the set. So I die cut it from just the same lighter green scrap of gray, scrap of lighter green cardstock. So I die cut the bodies from that. And then I used uh, Concord 9th Peacock ink and another uh, waffle flower brush to add just a bit of um, that color to the green. I was kind of thinking, you know, like I, the dragonflies that have that like greeny turquoise reflect. And then I also went in with a bit of black and a little teeny tiny waffle flower blending brush. Um, it looks a lot darker. These do dry back. These are very similar, very similar in formula to Simon's positively saturated inks. And they do soften and dry back a bit to a softer, like lighter look. So just something to be aware of when you're, you know, if you're ink blending or things like this, it's just a nice thing to note that sometimes if it looks like way too dark and intense, let it fully dry and then come back to it. Then for the wings, my, my go-to favorite always for like bugs wings and little embellishments like this is Lawn Fawn Pearlescent Vellum because it's perfect. It's so pretty. So I die cut the wings from that pearlescent vellum and then it just adhered that to the little bodies. These are, these are, these are the easiest lovely layer sets because two pieces, that's it can't go wrong and there's a little embossed section there on the body of the dragonfly to show you exactly where um, the wings get adhered and again reverse tweezers just to like hold the vellum in place till the glue dried and then um I pulled out the stencil again because like I said I just I really like the stencil and especially how it looks on this white cardstock this was just a whim I was like I just want to add you know you guys know I like to have some little pattern different things going on on the inside of the card so I took some white cardstock and the stencil and one of my paper pouncers and I'm using Concord 9th aqua sky ink so just very light aqua color and purposely having like darker areas and lighter areas and when you remove the stencil I was like yes yes it just makes me think of how when you know water on the lake is like almost calm and the lights reflecting off of it you know and you have those little like ripples that's what it just makes me think of you know and oh now I'm getting ideas you could do it with like dark cardstock like black and then do like metallics and make it look like you know an oil spill that sort of you know reflect not that I want to do like an oil spill themed card I'm just thinking of the look okay anyway anyway <laughs> after I did those I pulled out another piece of that same cardstock and I'm using sentiments from the new uh be still uh, sentiment set. This one's got a lot of really good sentiments. It uses the scripty font that I really love. So I put the cardstock in my mini misty and I used my anti-static powder tool. Uh, inked up the sentiments with clear embossing ink. I used the stamp packaging to move the one stamp so I could stamp it a second time without getting without having to clean the stamp or get embossing ink where I didn't want it. And coated everything with white embossing powder melted that with my heat tool and then I'm using the coordinating wafer dies to die cut these sentiments taping them into place with just little bits of washi tape so that these don't shift when I run them through my die cut machine so I get those taped into place die cut all the sentiments 
And then um, now that that's done, it's time to start assembling the cards. So the backgrounds that I had used that uh, Paper Glaze Lux paste on were, once they were dry, I trimmed them down with my paper trimmer to just slightly smaller than an A2 card front. So it's like four inches by five and a quarter, something like that. So it also gives you an idea just how big um, this water lily die kit is. Like totally could do larger cards like a five by seven card would be fabulous with these die cuts you know and it wouldn't be you know because certain images certain um die cuts can be too small for the larger cards honeybee's got a lot that are big enough more than big enough that you can do nice nice big cards if you want but i stuck with a2 this time so i adhered all my elements with just um craft tacky glue you could definitely again you could pop these up with foam squares all the fun things but I decided there's more than enough detail and dimension going on. The sentiment, I put just a couple little tiny bits of foam dimension just off that one end there so that it would stack up nicely on top of all the layers of the flower and then adhere that into place. Did the same thing with the second card front. And then on the insides of the cards, I'm going to adhere the white cardstock that I'd stenciled. And once I get that adhered, I'll add the um, little companion sentiments. I really liked this sentiment from the Be Still uh, set that says, Friends like you make the good times even better. And I was like, oh, new favorite. This one is just a good one to put in like all the cards. <laughs> so um, adhered those into place with Craft Hacky Glue as well. And I just have um, Simon's Craft Hacky Glue in a little Gina K um, detail bottle. I've been using this now for I'm not even sure how many months and so far so good. I'm loving it. It just works great. So I will have links to that just like everything else. And once everything was adhered to the card fronts to pop these onto the card bases, I used Simon's Big Mama foam tape. Again, gives it a little bit of dimension without a ton of bulk. So stuck that on the back, peeled off the backing, pop these onto the cards. And then as a final bit of embellishment, I added some little honeybee um, gems that are self-adhesive. So I just use my little die pick and I just kind of like scrape up underneath because these are all self-adhesive. So it just kind of picks them up with the adhesive and then I can just press them into place. So I was kind of thinking like almost looking like little water droplets or dew drops, you know. So I hear just a few of those and that finished off these cards. I'm pretty sure I forgot to mention at the beginning <laughs> that this is actually part of a video hop for Honeybee. So that info will be in the description box below the video. Definitely worth checking out. There's several designers hopping along. There's going to be a bunch of inspiration and giveaways. So check out the description box below the video for all that info. And then of course I will also have um, a link to my blog post, the supply list, I'll link to list and link all the supplies I used. You can check that out below as well. And then at the end, I'll link to my Lovely Layers playlist with all the videos I've done with all the different Lovely Layers sets. So I'll have a link to that that you can check out if you are interested. And of course, thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos. I very much appreciate it. Thumbs up, comment. It it 100% helps and I love interacting with you guys. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.